like most attractive celebrities? It, 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 whether attractive by face or by personality or they whatever. Any, do they have to be in any kind of, I'm going to grab a pen. <laughs> any kind of order? No, 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 no. Unless, of course, you want to give us the order. Because we will be quoting you. <laughs> well, okay. Well, obviously, from the, my uh, short title, na my short film title, um, I'm a huge fan of Jenny Lewis, who is a, um, she was a child star turned um, musical artist. And she has, an, she has an amazing body of work. She's not a lesbian, but she is definitely on my list. Um, uh, Zoe Deschanel, uh, who is also not a lesbian. <laughs> Duh. Uh, should, Duh. Should I, should I, okay. Um, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Which one of the Chan uh, which one of the, the Chanel's? Zoe. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Zoe Deschanel. Um, by the way, she's playing a lesbian in a couple of months. <clears throat> just, just oh, only by and by. Yep. Yeah, she's coming out on a film where she's a lesbian. You did really? know that, right? Ooh. Oh, wait. That's a new TV show. Jenny yes. Lewis was in Foxfire with Angelina Jolie. I know. Um, okay. So, Jenny Lewis, Zoe Deschanel. I have just recently become a huge fan of She Tall Shack, as I said. Uh -huh. Um. Oh, my gosh. Top ten is so hard. Um. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Kate Blanchett. Um, Give one. Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> the first lesbian. Um, um. Oh my gosh, this is really difficult. I, <laughs> how many do you have? Five. Six. Yeah, five. I have five. Um. Which Kate it is I that? Wait, wait, hold on. Which Kate was it? Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Right, right. Michelle Rodriguez. Um. Oh my gosh, I'd have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> I, I can't believe in, in, in a list of five you have one lesbian who insists she's not a lesbian. I know, what's up with that? I try not to keep up with who actually is the lesbian versus the others. I just try to I try to give them all an even an even even playing field as far as my, my fandom. Um, so there's my excuse for that one. I'd have to I'd have to research who actually is lesbians. I try not to I try not to know anything about um, celebrities that I enjoy because it takes away from their work for me. I want like I had a really uh, I had a love affair with uh, Fingersmith. I think we talked about last time. <laughs> and, and I um, so I I watched the movie a couple when I first came out of the closet. I bought like a ton of lesbian movies, of course, as we all do. And Fingersmith was one of them, and I wasn't really a big fan of it. I was just like, eh, whatever. So then recently my friend let me borrow the book. And I, when I read the book and then I watched the movie, and I was just like totally wrapped up in, in, in the story. I could not, I could not, I had no exit strategy from the story. I just wanted to read the book or watch the movie all the time because it was like, it was so intoxicating. So um, I told you, I think I told you the story in the last one where my friend um, who lives in L.A., she was at the Apple store and she saw Elaine Cassidy. And she was like, yeah, I saw her at the Apple store. And I'm like, I don't want to know that she goes to the Apple store. Like, all I want to I just want her to live in the 1800s in this story. I don't want to know anything about what she does, like, when she, where she's going out with her husband. I don't want to know. I don't want to know any of it. So I try to I try to keep totally ignorant to their actual lives so that it doesn't take away from, from my uh, suspension of disbelief as far as the films go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a little bit crazy. I I, 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 in, I just enjoy believing that the worlds are real because they're so romantic, and I feel like I'm not surprised by reality anymore. That I that movies kind of take me take me into that element of of excitement and surprise. Well, um, okay then, <laughs> because um, <laughs> no, because um, I I obviously I'm totally different because of well the website that I run mm -hmm. and uh, I have to delve into all these uh, these lies and stuff for that and, but what was most surprising to me really surprising to me is that when I got into how should I put it when I, I made certain friendships she says sweetheart let me tell you something we're very much a very close-knit community 
and the reason why some of us are so very afraid is because realistically no matter how much the out women tell you they take did you you've never seen one struggling come out the reason mm -hmm. why is because all our managers and production team and um, all our um, agents yeah. are screaming at us to stay in the closet. Yeah, you know? it's hard. I have, I have friends who are in the industry that are out professionally, and it's really hard because I'll have, like, you know, um, some of them are in a profession that I, that I document as far as... Um, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I have this amazing piece of art that you've done, but I can't put it out there because you're not out professionally for this and that reason, and it's really difficult. But I don't know. There, it, I guess it is a close knit circle. I, I'm not in that circle at all, <laughs> and I have terrible gaydar, so I kind of just float through life and and assume that when something is going to happen, it'll happen. I'm going to add Shelley Wright to my list, by the way. <laughs> Oh, oh! I was wondering how come you didn't put her because considering you stood up for how how many hours trying an to get hour her. And a half. <laughs> and, uh, I I don't I don't want to I don't want to single her out because I also waited for um, Dina Carter and Amanda Wilkinson and uh, Sarah Evans. Uh, so definitely, I was in a lot of lines. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's difficult, and and from what I when I went up there for Outfest, I can tell that is a very like as far as the film community, it is a very close knit um, lesbian community up there, and they all seem like amazing women, but I don't really know them. <laughs> um, I don't know if I know the other side of the lesbian comic com um um thing because as far as I know, there there's a large comedic lesbian community. In California. Oh, there is, and there's amazing shows we have here in San Diego. Um, there's a woman named Sarah Burford who uh, produces a show uh, just down the street from my house, and she has amazing gay and lesbian comedians, as well as uh, Kathy Lewis, who does the She's Funny show up in uh, L.A., which actually is on, uh, there's one on this Friday night, July 29th, and Erin Showers, who's an amazing comedian, has a has a kind of a, a interview thing that she's doing that she's going to debut there. So I mean, there's there's a lot of lesbian themed um, produced comedian shows, and they're all amazing people. Like all my comedian friends are some of my best friends. So um, and they and they all we they're just so artistic in themselves in a, in a way that I could never be. Like I'm not funny at all, and I um, I go to these shows and not true, are, not true. I, I go to these shows and I go so often because my friends are the comedians that people are like people think that I'm a comedian. I'm like, oh, girl, you don't want me to get up there. Like, oh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that would be a good five minutes of my life. But, um, but yeah, sort of the comedian community is an amazing community. We they treat me very well and and keep me kind of uh, artistically satisfied and, and keep me going. So. So yeah, there's a lot of props to them, but I, I'm not really in. I'm not really in the in the circle of the actor, the lesbian acting community. I don't know very much about it. You know, I, I just kind of float around in my own head, in my own life. So <laughs> here in San Diego. Well, the thing about it is that, uh, as I said, when I first started PNT, it was the number one thing because, as you know, my 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 the main scene running around um, is the fact that I only do this for um, queer women, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and that's two separate things. I only do this for queer and women. I don't really do this for gay men at all. They have their own separate. They have after Alton <laughs> and all of these other avenues that they can go to. And when I first started PNT, I I did not see and you know a lot of of of, of of leeway for us uh -huh. um, and just for us everybody else opened their arms to everyone men and yeah. female and not just female so yeah, I, was, I was just at the uh, bookstore in Chicago I, on the way to Chicago I read Despite the Falling Snow by Shimon Seraph and then um, when I got there I needed another book to read on the way back so I went to find I wanted to read The World Unseen so I went to the local bookstore and there was maybe like 12 shelves of gay male fiction and there was one of lesbian fiction and not the book I was looking for I <laughs> I didn't they did not have the world unseen I was really upset um, but I ended up taking home a Sarah Waters book um, 
but I was just like, wow, you go anywhere and there's so much, there's so many gay men making short films and making films and writing books and there, when you go on that same on that same kind of plane to go see what the lesbians or the gay women are doing, there's not a, nearly as much and I don't know if that's because there's no platform or because we're not doing as much, I don't know, but mine's going to be out there, so <laughs> you put mine in the mix. Facebook and all this stuff so that we can put the band together so that we can make it for ourselves and that's just the amazing part of, of where we are in time right now and I'm so grateful for it because right now it's it's just so easy for me to be like, that, well it's not easy, but it's easy for me to think, hey I, ha I have this idea for a project and I'm totally capable of doing it no matter if, if I have 10 people on my side or 2 people. Um, I mean of, of course if I have 10 people on my side and I can give them money then it makes it easier because then they can do things like take time off and they can put more effort into and more energy into what we're doing so that we can all be be successful in that way. Um, but it, it, the time that we live in is amazing just because of communities like PNT and communities like, uh, uh, you know, there's a San Diego filmmakers community. Just, just there are so many communities that are that are geared toward just helping helping other people do what they need to do and not necessarily for, mon for monetary reasons. And of course. Like money is always necessary to get things done. Like you need money to you know, buy, the, buy the film, buy the tapes, whatever your medium is, and to rent the rent the lights and and to find the actors who will be able to take off, you know, three or four weeks from what they usually do in order to be a part of it. So there's always that side of it, but but we live in an amazing time uh, where where we can we can get these things done with with very little money or or you know with with a normal budget. That, Hollywood movies have so it's it's good to have this community. But seriously, and, and it's and it's amazing to have those experiences because then you kind of gain your own community. And I've I've done a lot of a lot of projects that are not film related. I've done uh, events and fundraisers, um, and I have a community of people where uh, there's this girl. Her name is Christine, and she does a lot of my promotions. If I have an event, and she's like she's like girl like. Uh, what do you need? What do you need? I can be there when we can have meetings and stuff like that. And I, when I make money, I try to I try to give back to them so that so that I can thank them for what they do and paying it forward in that way. Um, so right now I have such an amazing group of people that I one of my goals um, is to is to keep building so that I can actually give them the necessities that they need and we can all do this. Get up every morning and this is what we do. Um, and be able to support ourselves doing that, and that, and I don't, and I don't mean that I want to make a bunch of money and do all this other stuff so that I can, you know. But it's, I think it's important for me. It's important for me to take care of the people who have taken care of me in all of my adventures, no matter what they are. Um, and and this is a, this is a really, this movie is a really huge adventure, and the one, and the one reason why I'm so so hardcore about getting a budget and, and paying people is because these are people who have been there with me, Brian. Who um, he may uh, be my cinematographer. I went to college with him, and he worked with me on uh, Dragon Named Sue. Like he he was there for me then, and when I had scripts that I needed to, to to read, I would send to him. And then Chad, who I told you helped me, is helping me with my revisions. And it's just like these people have been have been with me since you know the beginning, like the beginning before I even knew who I was. And to be able to be in a position where I can give back to them for sticking with me and for co constantly supporting my artistic career, and they they've been building. I mean, this, I have a I have an amazing community of people who who help me. I go out to the bars and and talk and to, to network and things like that. And we have um, we have a this event um, this event group in San Diego. And when I did my fundraiser. I was like, hey, I, I'm doing a fundraiser. My friend, uh, my friend was doing a triathlon, and we were raising money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And so I, I sent them an email, and they were like, what do you need? And I'll get, I'll get it done for you. And they, there was no money exchanged, and they're just like, they're just there. There are certain people who are just there to help you. So for me, being able to having that pay it forward, and being able to give them whatever I can give them to make their lives easier, as far as, as far as us building ourselves as a community to just do this um, that's really important to me and I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm I'm just starting with this project and this is the first thing that I'm doing and I'm kind of this girl who wants who wants to raise all this money so that I can do this really extravagant project it's this is just 
with me and with with everyone who's helping me it's been it's been a community it's been a friendship it's been support for for as long as i can remember so that's kind of why um that's why it's so important for me to take care of them and and it's been like your community online um it's it's the same idea where we, we all just help each other 